hello, hello, and welcome to episode 60 of Prog Review. And today we're we'll talking about The Geese and the Ghost by a certain Anthony Phillips. What a lovely album cover. Now, before I start to gabble on about this record, I'm going to get the rating out of the way because, well, for me, it's such an essential album. I'm just going to give it five Chinese mushroom clouds out of five. Yes, that's five Chinese mushroom clouds out of five. Whew. So, hey, I'm glad that's out of the way. That's that monkey off me back. So, let's talk about the record. The album opens with um, one of Anthony Phillips' trademarks, a, a short little musical vignette. You'll get used to these pieces if you've heard any of his other albums. Um, it's a backwards, forwards, swirly, swishy little piece called Wind Tales, which takes us neatly into the first proper song of the album, Which Way the Wind Blows. Now, this is one of the, of the, the first of three uh, vocal songs on the record and it features the vocal talents of some fellow called Bill Collins I've never heard of him either don't worry in fact um, Bill Collins was singing vocals with Anthony Phillips long before he stepped out from behind the drum kit with that band Genesis so there you go uh, this is what I call an electric folk number but features those little hooks and melodies that you'd expect to hear from a, a Genesis song. Yes, really. You, in fact, you can actually envisage hearing this on a Genesis album, if it's that good. If you can imagine uh, For Absent Friends crossed with Entangled with a dash of blood on the rooftops, uh, and you kind of understand what stylistic ballpark we're heading for. Um, this is followed by an extended piece there's two of them on the album. The first one is called Henry Portrait from Tudor Times. And it's a minute shy of a quarter of an hour. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a bit long. <laughs> and it does its best to evoke images of medieval Britain. But for me, it's more of a folksy pastoral piece that brings back memories of, of that Trespass album and that band Genesis. It really is hard to get rid of those comparisons um, when you hear this album and you realise that you know the guitarists from Genesis tend to cast a longish shadow over the band when you hear their subsequent solo releases and saying the same thing about Steve Hackett. Um, this track is, is a little meandering in places, but when you have musicianship of this quality, it's easy to forgive a lack of editorial discipline. Then we have another song, God If I Saw Her Now. It's a, another electroacoustic duet featuring the, the larynx of Phil Collins telling a twisted tale of love. Um, it's complemented by the vocals of Viv McAuliffe. Um, and we have uh, a, a kind of his and her story bounced between the two of them. It's battered between them and it's a it's a bittersweet tale, it really is. But the music, again, is classic Genesis, complete with flute and 12-string guitar passages. It's a lovely song, if a little dark lyrically. Now, if this was the LP, we'd turn it over. <laughs> but of course, nobody has LPs anymore. Who, who uses this antiquated technology? <laughs> if it was the LP, you turn it over, and the first track on the B-side is Chinese a mushroom cloud again it's another little musical vignette it features 12 string guitars and dramatic chords um, and then we hit the actual title track of the album it's divided into into two parts and it's again it's um, 15 minutes 41 51 seconds on the CD different on the album where the extra seconds come from I don't know um, but yeah, so it's it's kind of the the title track is split into two movements. Again, it's another pastoral journey with twelve string guitars, oboes, cor anglais, as well as violins, and even a splash of the old mellotron. You know, we're in prog territory when the mellotron's drawn out. Okay, again, it's a bit meandering, but you know, I am such a 
fan of this record, I'm going to forgive it. So, yeah, what can you do about it? Huh? Um, but the last section, there's, a, there's the last two minutes, two and a half, three minutes of, of, of this track. It really does remind you of it being a Genesis record. It elicits distinct memories of stagnation and trespass and his time with the band. Um, this is followed by Collections, uh, which is a melancholic little number featuring the vocals of, of Anthony Phillips himself. And um, no matter how many times I hear it, it gets me a little bit maudlin. So uh, I recommend not to listen to this under the influence of a couple of glasses of, of the old red vino. No, no, no. You know, don't want to get all maudlin, do we now? But it dovetails, dovetails, uh, quite nicely into sleep for, uh, sleep for the geese fly west. Dovetails, geese tails. I don't know. <laughs> Which starts off as a piano piece, but it's soon accompanied by... Uh, rich synth textures and the main melody being played on the oboe. It's a very sweet piece and it shows Philip's strength, uh, you know, writing a strong tune. So, so that's the album. Um, nowadays, um, you know, it's available on CD and the, the the latest edition has been expanded somewhat. You get a second CD, uh, which is packed to the gills of. Um, with demo tracks and alternate mixes and there's even an unreleased version of Silver Song which features Phil Collins and Mike Rutherford and it was actually written by the fellow Genesis member Long John Silver the Pirate I think that's right isn't it? Anyway it's strange to think that this album you know it had a bit of a difficult birth uh, it took a long time for Anthony Phillips and Mike Rutherford to, to record it because Rutherford was busy with Genesis and you know it took him a good three I think it was about three years to record it and when Phillips had finished it he took it to the record company took it to 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 Tony Stratton Smith I think it was and they said well they weren't interested and he he got it released on Passport Records in America they picked it up and then because it got a bit of interest there they started hit and run music over here and the um he got it published then. Um, it's not really a, a big release, it's more of a cult classic. Um, but, you know, I always find it surprising when it the when it's got such a pedigree of musicians, because on this album you've got, not only have you got Andy Phillips, you've also got, of course, Phil Collins doing vocals. Uh, there's Mike Rutherford as well. There's also John Hackett, can you believe? You know, Steve Hackett's brother playing flute on on three of the tracks, um, as well as, looking at his notes, Tom Newman puts in an appearance. So you see, it's got quite a big, good pedigree. So it's unusual that it got turned down. You've even got, of course, you've even got the debut of the now legendary Ralph Berniscan, who who ends up um, appearing on, on most of Anthony Phillips' records. So you know, check him out. Okay. It's not a perfect album, you know. It's but what you've got with this is it's an album of possibilities, you know, because some of this was written when Anthony Phillips was with Genesis back in 1969, and um, you know when you hear these songs, you can imagine, you know, maybe Gabriel could have sung a vocal over them, or even Tony Banks would have added some keyboards. It was, you know, for for a Genesis fan, it really is one of those what if moments. So let's have a look at the album sleeve itself. Um, as you can see, it's quite an iconic album. It's uh, drawn and designed by artist Peter Cross, who went on to do a lot of the album sleeves for Andy Phillips. He does these very ornate and very detailed um, paintings, and they're absolutely amazing to look at. So uh, let's have a look at the uh, the LP version. What tracks are on there? As you can see, they're all broken down by minutes and seconds. And here's all the musicians: Phillips, Rutherford, Collins, um, Hackett. These are just the ones I've heard of. <laughs> and of course, was Ralph Berniscone. And um, say so this one was released on the Hit and Run music label. So there you go. So got the original inner bag, which has all the lyrics. As you can see, it's kind of in this gothic font. Um, but what you get with this, if I just flip it over, is like a little story that accompanies Henry portraits from Tudor times. And uh, yeah, well, so <laughs> nothing great, but 
you get to see what the original LP looks like and on the inner label you get a, a kind of trick of the towel logo for hit and run music and the same is on the B side so also, but you know, for me personally I just want to get personal uh, it takes me back to time when I was 17 that's when I discovered the album I had my first um, part time job and had some cash in my pocket started dating the missus and you know a world of possibilities were in front of me and it was a time long before the weight of the world crushed this gentle spirit yes indeed and so it's an album of its time for me it's a moment trapped in sound a bit like a prehistoric insect encased in amber so it's a very very precious thing to me maybe it'll be precious to you I mean if you're a Genesis fan you should have checked this out by now um, so you know you better toodle off and get this one in your collection so that's it nearly hitting my mark now uh, my name's been Darren Locke I've been talking about Anthony Phillips debut album The Geese and the Ghost thumbs up thumbs down subscribe unsubscribe tell your granny make the dog watch the video blah 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 links to all the usual social media outlets you can twitter me f smack me in the facebook or you know look at me google plus i don't know what it is either um but anyway check those out because i have all the updates on there and it's probably easier to follow than this mess that youtube has made of, of everything uh, and that's it really um only one more thing to say, prog on.